At first I regarded little but the road before me. And then, abruptly, my attention was arrested by something that was moving rapidly down the opposite slope of Mabry Hill. At first I took it for the wet roof of a house, but one flash following another showed it to be in swift rolling movement. It was an elusive vision, a moment of bewildering darkness, and then, in a flash like daylight, the red masses of the orphanage near the crest of the hill, the green tops of the pine trees, and this problematical object came out clear and sharp and bright. And this thing I saw. How can I describe it? A monstrous tripod, higher than many houses, striding over the young pine trees and smashing them aside in its career. A walking engine of glittering metal, striding now across the heather, articulate ropes of steel dangling from it, and the cluttering tumult of its passage mingling with the riot of the thunder. A flash! and it came out vividly, healing over one way, with two feet in the air, to vanish and reappear almost instantly as it seemed, with the next flash a hundred yards nearer. Can you imagine a milking stool tilted and bowled violently along the ground? That was the impression those instant flashes gave. But instead of a milking stool, imagine it a great body of machinery on a tripod stand. Then suddenly the trees in the pine wood ahead of me were parted, as brittle reeds are parted by a man thrusting through them. They were snapped off and driven headlong, and a second huge trap had appeared, rushing, as it seemed, headlong towards me, and I was galloping hard to meet it. At the sight of the second monster my nerve went altogether. Not stopping to look round again, I wrenched the horse's head hard round to the right, and in another moment the dog cart had heeled over upon the horse. The shaft smashed noisily, and I was flung sideways, and fell heavily into the shallow pool of water. I crawled out immediately and crouched, my feet still in the water, under a clump of furs. The horse lay motionless. His neck was broken, poor brute, and by the lightning flashes I saw the blank bulk of the overturned dog cart and the silhouette of the wheel still spinning slowly. In another moment the colossal mechanism went striding by me and passed uphill towards Parford. Seen nearer, the thing was incredibly strange, for it was no mere insensate machine driving on its way. Machine it was, with a ringing metal pace, and long, flexible, glittering tentacles, one of which gripped a young pine tree, swinging and rattling about its strange body. It picked its road at its fence striding along, and the brazen hood that surmounted it moved to and fro with the inevitable suggestion of a head looking about. Behind the made body was a huge mass of white metal, like a gigantic fisherman's basket, and puffs of green smoke squirted out from the joints of the limbs as the monster swept by me, and in an instant it was gone. So much I saw then, all vaguely from the flickering of the lightning, in blinding highlights and dense black shadows. As it passed, it set up an exultant deafening howl that drowned the thunder. and in another minute it was with his companion, half a mile away, stooping over something in a field. I have no doubt, this thing in the field was a third of the ten cylinders they had fired at us from Mars. For some minutes I lay there in the rain and darkness, watching, by the intermittent light, these monstrous beings of metal moving about in the distance over the hedge tops. A thin hail was now beginning, and as it came and went, their figures grew misty and then flashed into clearness again. Now and then came a gap in the lightning, and the night swallowed them up.